hey there, subscribe to my channel, and also press this bell icon so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Part 1 You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we will play the recording. Listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25 percent more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. OK. How about if I book a return date on the 29th and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st? Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 6 to 10. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. OK, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly, student ID 92. One, two, three, zero, two, zero. Your phone number, please. Eight, seven, zero, five, two, one, zero, nine. Please tell me your mailing address. Three, five, four, Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now, just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of takeoff time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. 
If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a travel agent discussing a holiday booking with two customers. Look at questions 11 to 13. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, good morning. We'd like to book a holiday for July, please. Certainly. Where did you have in mind? Oh, well, we haven't thought a lot about it, really. We'd just like to go somewhere hot, you know, and it must be in July. I see. Well, let's get the dates cleared up first, then we can see about availability. What part of July were you thinking of? Oh, well, you see, we have slightly different holidays. I've got the whole month except for the last five days, so I could go from the 1st to the 26th. But my friend here doesn't start until the 7th, so I suppose it will have to be the middle two weeks, really. Yes, but I've got to be back before the 23rd. OK. Now, let's find a destination. Before the tour continues, Look at questions 14 to 20. As you listen to the second part of the talk, answer the questions. Any preferences? France? Italy? Oh, not France. We went there last year and it was absolutely packed with teenagers, making noise and getting drunk all the time. Yes, it was terrible. We definitely want somewhere quieter this year. <laughs> well, of course, it depends more on the resort rather than the country. There are resorts in every country which cater for the family or the slightly older person. They're usually a shade more expensive, though, as you might expect. Oh, well, we don't mind paying a bit more if it means more peace and quiet, do we? Definitely not. It'll be well worth it. All right. Let's have a look at what we've got on the computer. July. Was it 10 or 14 nights you wanted? Oh, the fortnight, please. Right. Well, let's start with Italy. Um, we've got 14 nights bed and breakfast in Sorrento for £345 from Manchester on the 14th. Or we've got... No, wait a minute. That's no good for me. We wouldn't get back till the 28th. And I've got to be back at work before that. Ah, yes. Um, how about Sweden? Two weeks? Half board. How much would that be? That would be £540 from Manchester again. Well, £540... Oh, that seems too much. Well, madam, there's a surcharge for the airport and it has a five-star hotel. Oh, well, it's a bit over our budget, really. All right. 
Let's try somewhere else. How about Portugal? Oh, that sounds great. We've never been there before, have we? Let's see now. We've got 14 nights in Albufeira, half board from Gatwick, for £385. Albufeira? Oh, wait a minute. Did you say the flight was from London? That's right, from Gatwick. Oh, well, we'd prefer a flight from the north somewhere. Manchester, perhaps, or even Glasgow. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between two students, Rosie and Mike, and a university tutor. In the first part of the discussion, they're talking about a survey they have conducted on local entertainment. First, look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen to the first part of the discussion and answer questions 21 to 26. Good morning, everyone. Well, I think we can start straight away by getting Rosie and Mike to do their presentation. Would you like to start, Rosie? Yes. Well, um, we've done a survey on local entertainment. Basically, we tried to find out how students feel about the entertainment in the town and how much they use it. Yes, so we've called our project Out and About. Yes, that's a good title, Out and About. We wanted to find out how well students use the entertainment facilities in town, whether they get to see the latest plays, films, that kind of thing. Now, we have our own facilities on campus, of course. Oh, yes. We deliberately omitted those as we really wanted to examine outside entertainment in the town as opposed to on the university campus. Actually, there were a lot of areas to choose from, but in the end we limited ourselves to looking at three general categories. Cinema, theatre and music. Right. OK, well, uh, first of all, cinema. In the town, there are three main places where you can see films. There's the new multi-screen cinema complex, the old park cinema, and a late-night Odeon. So, if you look at this chart, in terms of audience size, the multi-screen complex accounts for 75% of all cinema seats, the park cinema accounts for 20% of seats, and the late-night Odeon has just 5% of seats. As you probably know, the complex and the park show all the latest films, while the late night cinema tends to show cult films. So, when we interviewed the students, we thought the complex would be the most popular choice of cinema. But surprisingly, it was the late night Odeon. Yeah, and most students said that if they wanted to see a new film, they waited for it to show at the park, because the complex is more expensive and further out of town, so you have to pay more to get there as well. Yes. And that adds to the cost, of course, and detracts from the popularity, evidently. Well, next, we looked at theatres. The results here were interesting because, as you know, there's a, a theatre on campus, which is popular, but there's also the stage theatre in town, which is very old and architecturally quite beautiful. And there's the large modern theatre, the Ashtop, that has recently been built. So you just looked at the two theatres in town? Yes, 
But the thing about the theatres is that there's a whole variety of seat prices. Also, the types of performance vary. So students tend to buy seats at both and like using both for different reasons. And if they want cheap seats at the ash top, they can just sit further from the front. What we did find that was very interesting is that there are periods during the year when students seem to go to the theatre and periods when they go to the cinema. And we really think that's to do with budget. If you look at this graph, you can see that um, there's a peak around November, December when they go to the theatre more, and then a period in April, May when neither is particularly popular. And then uh, theatre viewing seems to trail off virtually, while the cinema becomes quite popular in June, July. Hmm. I think you're probably right about your conclusions. In the second part of the discussion, Rosie and Mike talk about different music clubs. Look at questions 27 to 30 first. Listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, lastly, we looked at music, and this time we were really investigating the sort of small music clubs that offer things like folk or specialise in local bands. So not musicals as such? That's right. <laughs> We looked at three small music venues and we examined the quality of the entertainment and the venue and gave a ranking for these. A cross, meaning that the quality was poor, a tick, meaning it was OK, and two ticks for excellent. First of all, the Blues Club, which obviously specialises in blues music. This was a pretty small place and the seating was minimal, so we didn't give that a very good rating. No, we don't recommend that one, really. Then the Sansu, which plays a lot of South American music. It was a big place, very lively, good performers, so two ticks for that one. The Pier Hotel is a folk venue, a good place for local and up-and-coming folk artists to play. Not the best of venues, as it's in a basement and a bit dark, but the quality of the entertainment was reasonable and the lighting was very warm, so we felt it deserved an average rating. Now, finally, there's the Bald Rock Cafe, which features big rock bands and is pretty popular with students, and we enjoyed ourselves there as well, so top marks for that one. And then, did you get any information from the students as to which of the clubs they preferred? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. I'd like to talk about the changes to our leisure time, and I'll start by talking about lifestyle changes over recent years for women. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I'd like to talk about the changes to our leisure time and I'll start by talking about lifestyle changes over recent years for women. As we all know, the wife and mother of the family has traditionally been responsible for organising and completing household tasks for the family. However, particularly over the last decade or so, we have seen a greater number of women continuing to work after marriage and returning to work after having children. This has significantly reduced the amount of time available for household chores. The result is that nowadays the majority of people own and regularly use products such as dishwashers or microwaves. The modern family often considers hours spent on cleaning and cooking as a waste of valuable time and generally we are all interested in finding ways of reducing the number of hours we need to devote to such tasks. While washing machines have long been thought of as necessities by families, nowadays so too are microwaves and dishwashers. These goods can drastically reduce the amount of time we need to spend running our home and increase the amount of time available not only to go to work, but also to spend on leisure pursuits. As society develops and we become richer, we put more value on our leisure time and our possessions. The richer a society, the more demanding it becomes. People are no longer happy to work long hours for little return. Expensive holidays, expensive clothes and cars all become more important the more materialistic the society in which we live. Acquiring things and joining the race of acquisition means that modern society spends a lot of time and money purchasing unnecessary goods. Although expensive and persuasive marketing techniques are partly responsible, the demand for such goods often comes from young professionals. Those with the money to endlessly upgrade things simply because a better model is made available. Our obsession with the newest and best products available, while good for the economy, can also have a negative impact on the environment. It is not appropriate to overproduce appliances and overuse electricity to keep these unnecessary appliances operating in our homes. We often forget about the damage we have done to and continue to do to the environment. Others opposed to the overuse of appliances and technology also argue that from a social point of view, over-reliance on gadgets means that people are losing the ability to be creative. Traditionally, it was considered an enviable skill to prepare meals night after night for our families. Nowadays, women are more likely to gain approval from others for their success in their careers than their ability in the kitchen. Along with microwaves have come ready-cooked meals, pre-washed vegetables, and our reliance on takeaway food when we are too busy to cook it ourselves. While there are obvious advantages and disadvantages to our increasingly active buying behaviour and changing wants and desires, it is likely that our desire to purchase labour-saving items will continue. So it is therefore inevitable that production of such goods will increase. We can only hope to educate ourselves and our children to buy goods we need, not just goods that are available and we must also consider their environmental impact. In short, moderation is the most important word for the future. I thank you very much for coming today and listening. That is the end of part four.